Hey pals, welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov too, and actually I wanted to put this video up yesterday, but I couldn't get onto the test server. I think it was um, down for maintenance or something. Anyway, today it's up again, and uh, I'm taking a look at the Object 430 version 2, the new Soviet tier 9 medium tank. If we have a quick look at the tech tree, we can see there's this new tier 10 vehicle added for object 430 that i already reviewed and then there's this new t9 the object 432 you can only unlock this tank from the object 416 you can still get the t54 from the object 416 and then get the object 140 and the t62a from there all in all this tank is basically very similar to the t54 but a bit worse in nearly every respect. Still, I must say I enjoyed playing this tank. I had a few games in it. I think the T-54 is in a lot stronger vehicle. However, this tank still is not bad and can do quite well on the battlefield. So obviously, I'll be comparing it to the T-54 as that is what this tank's going to be competing with. The Object 430 has got a slightly higher hit point pool with 1,700 hit points instead of the 1,650 of the T-54. It's slightly heavier, but the engine power is significantly less with 120 horsepower less. That means that this tank only gets a power to weight ratio of 16.07, which is still alright for a medium tank, but it's not very good. The T-54 gets an amazing 19.93, that's nearly a power to weight ratio of 20 horsepower per ton. That's really, really good. So that, that's the first category in which the Object 430 to is worse than the T-54. But it doesn't stop there, because the Object 430 has got a slightly reduced speed limit, but I mean, that's not that's a significant difference. There's only one kph in it. The traverse speed is exactly the same. The hull armor is exactly the same, except for the rear armor is 5mm less, but you know, at these, if we're looking at 40 and 45mm, 5mm more crap is still crap. Turret has got quite a bit more armor, actually, on this vehicle here. It's got 248mm at the front, 185 at the sides, 63 at the rear. The turret from the side can be very difficult to penetrate in this tank. That's the only advantage I'd say that the Object 430 has over the T-54 because the T-54 from the side you can sometimes quite reliably penetrate, or not reliably, but you stand a good chance of penetrating the side of the turret of the T-54. And even the front, like for example if you're facing off against something like an Object 268 or one of the other tier 10 tank destroyers, they will pretty often be able to put a shell through your turret armour right here or here next to the gun mantlet. In the Object 432 that usually won't happen. The rear armor is just as bad as on the T-54. Next we'll come to the guns and the guns are really interesting on this tank because it gets the choice of two tier 9 guns and in my personal opinion I would prefer the stock gun over the upgraded one. We'll just quickly compare the stats of the two. So on the left side we've got the stock gun and on the right side the upgraded gun. They're both 100mm guns but the stock gun has quite a bit of a rate of fire advantage over the upgraded gun. The penetration, however, is slightly lacking with 201mm only. That's pretty bad at tier 9, really. 219 is a lot better, so that's a significant advantage of the upgraded gun. The alpha damage is exactly the same. The accuracy is quite a bit better on the stock gun. The aiming time is way better. And the aiming time is the reason why I would probably choose the stock gun over the upgraded gun because 2.9 seconds aiming time on a medium tank is really horrible. The accuracy is pretty lacking too, and basically the only thing that this gun has got over the stock gun is penetration, and I, I really would not upgrade to this gun. The only reason why I would research this gun on the tank is if you want to elite the vehicle. So, let's quickly compare this gun here, which I would definitely use on the tank, to the T-54's gun. On the T-54 you also get the choice of two guns. You get this 100mm T-54 which is also the upgraded gun on the Object 430 
and you get this gun here. And this gun is better than this gun. Usually, uh, most people will choose this gun, not that. So we're going to compare this. And both of the guns are quite similar. The rate of fire is better on the object gun. Penetration is exactly the same. The alpha damage is exactly the same. The accuracy is slightly better on the T-54's gun. And the aiming time is exactly the same. So basically, you trade a little bit more accuracy for reduced rate of fire. I think that's a fair deal to make. Personally, I'd probably prefer the gun of the object 430 just because the rate of fire for me is more important than the accuracy as these tanks will usually be engaging enemies at close ranges anyway. So I would probably prefer this gun. However, this gun's good too. They're both basically exactly the same gun, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. We can say that they are equal if it comes to the armament, but we're not done yet. Turret Traverse is a bit quicker on the T-54. The view range is exactly the same, and the signal range is exactly the same. So, all in all, for me, that means that the Object 430 is the worst tank out of the two really because the only thing that it's got over the T-54 is 50 hit points more, better turret armor, but the turret armor for T-54 is really good still, and a very very slightly increased rate of fire. So I think the fact that this tank's turret is rear mounted is another significant disadvantage. I also should tell you that the gun, you're only able to traverse the gun this far it's only got a it's actually slightly less than a 180 degrees turret traverse so you can basically only turn the turret to here and to here not any further and that will give you a really big disadvantage in brawling situations where you will be usually using this vehicle and you might think oh this tank will be great at side scraping but it won't because it's only got 80 millimeters of side armor and realistically you want to kind of angle your tank like this when side scraping and lots of tier 10 vehicles, especially the tank destroyers, will be able to put shots right through here. So I think with most, when engaging most tier 9 tanks, this vehicle here will be at a significant disadvantage. However, in a one-on-one -on -one situation on the T with the T-54, this tank might even come out on top because of a very slightly increased rate of fire and um, therefore increased DPM. However, I would definitely prefer the old tier 9 Russian medium tank for T-54 over this vehicle here. But I must say that I still enjoyed playing it and I do not dislike this vehicle. It's still a decent machine and to get the most out of it I would personally mount vents because they're really cheap on these medium tanks. Also you want to have a vertical stabilizer and a tank gun rammer so basically a fairly standard layout here. For crew skills who want to go for repairs maybe brothers and arms I wouldn't necessarily recommend brothers and arms although on this tank maybe brothers and arms but it's not a necessity on medium tanks really. You want to have six sense as on all tanks really on your commander, a smooth ride and snapshot on gunner and driver and then obviously save storage and stuff on your loader. So I've got, a, I actually had two games lined up for you guys, one with an upgraded gun, one with a stock gun, however once again World of Tanks decided not to save my replay file although I had selected save replay in the um, uh, menu. So I can't bring you the game with an upgraded gun, but that's not that important really anyway because this gun here, the stock gun, is really the gun that you'll be using on this tank. So that's head in and see how it performs. So, um, yeah, the game I originally intended to show you on Ensk um, didn't work out as well because apparently I'd forgotten to save the replay file or um, drag it into the folder basically. So uh, I quickly headed out and had two more games in this tank just to get some footage. And yeah, this is the best game I got out of the two. Uh, Actually, it was a bit better even than the game on Ents. So, let's just have a look. Now, I head out for the left side of the map, and I'm playing this very cautiously because usually what happens on this map is that most uh, tanks from the northern spawn point go to this ridge line where you can see, um, basically on the A and B line up there, where you can see our heavy and tank destroyer just moving along. So. Uh, usually you haven't got all that much support down here when you move here because you get don't get any sniper coverage from the ridge and d not all that many tanks move down here with you usually at least that's what I experienced on this map however this game is pretty different because as you can see I've got a lot of backup here and basically in the northern ridge there isn't that much going on so 
with object 268 being aggressive and telling me to follow him so i agree um just right there around that corner you could see me trying to do some side scraping basically preparing for enemies to come around however nobody appeared so i'm now right now i'm being really aggressive because what i'm trying to do is basically get beneath the gun line of the tank destroyers that definitely will be camping uh, on the ridge in front of their base or even loop round and uh, attack that IS-7 from the rear, enabling our heavy and medium tanks on the uh, level of ground above me to proceed. Uh, basically, I drawn to cover now because t T-110 E4 spotted. I don't really want to be taking any hits of him. However, I see that I can't really get into cover, so I guess my best bet is to stay moving. I fire one of the move, and right there you can see basically we spotted that one, and I've also spotted an object. Um, 215 B183. So basically, this entire damage being dealt to those two tanks is spotting damage by us. That's absolutely massive. Um, so now I decide, okay, screw that IS7. He's on very low health. The E100s will be able to take him out by themselves. So I'm just deciding, okay, I'm going to progress up the slope and I'm going to try to uh, take out the artillery, the Conqueror gun carriage, and the T92. However, then an STB-1 spotted, I fire one clutch on the move, then retreat straight away because I know that my armour and gun are no match for superior DPM on the 105mm. So I retreat, and now I think to myself, okay, I won't be much use to my team just sitting around here. Uh, and basically the artillery knows kind of where I am, so maybe they could even splash on me with my bad side and rear armour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the angle of engagement. I know that the fighting vehicle is somewhere up there on my right side with very low health. Basically I'm trying to hug the face of a rock here to get beneath his gun line. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is loop round, surprise that fighting vehicle and uh, basically butt rape him. And there he is. Probably he'll be taken out by my... Yeah, there we go. Artillery takes him out. Another E100 takes him out. Okay, so again, that's spotting damage for us, guys. Uh, that's really good. So, uh, let's just poke over here and see what we can see. Uh, the STB-1 is over there. He's not interested. And there's the artillery. And he's aiming at me. I really don't want to poke against the T-92. He basically only has to land a shell within 10 meters of me and I'm going to be dead. So... I'm staying, the good thing is that artillery has got really bad gun depression, so I'll, I'm i just basically trying to juke him into shooting, trying to trick him, but it's not really working. And there's a concrete gun carriage there too, I'm, there's no way I'm going to go up the slope with those two artilleries waiting for me. So basically I'm waiting for our artillery to kill them. Or for our my tank destroyer pal, the T60, ever uh, not the T, the um, object 268 to destroy that guy. And oh, he's had enough. He's getting bored. And we get one shot in. And retreat. Oh, I don't want to get hit by him. And he gets one shot into us. Oh no, he's going to ram us. But we survive. And you can see right there, that was really lucky. That was the limit of our gun traverse. You can see in the bottom left corner, those two lines to the left and right of my tank display. And those are the limits of my gun uh, gun traverse. And I was really lucky to be able to hit that guy. That can be like that could have just nearly cost me my life, the limit to gun traverse on this tank. Um, so I'm now just going to be aggressive against that gun carriage. Uh, he misses a shot. Uh, which is quite lucky actually, that was pretty risky of me. And he wants to ram me too, uh, he leaves me on pretty low health, but still I survive. And, oh, but he wants to go for the ram again, but this time I finish him off before he can make it happen. So that's my second kill, I basically killed two artilleries, and got loads of spotting damage in on the two tank destroyers, the T110E4 and the fighting vehicle. Um... Let's see... And, oh, he's, I thought he was looking the other way, he obviously wasn't. I get one shot into him. And, I, I underestimated his reload time there. I thought it would be quicker, uh, shorter, uh, longer, I mean, sorry, longer. Um, and I don't want, I don't want to push my luck a second time, so I get into cover and basically I'm going to let the object 268 finish that guy off. So, um. Yeah, I hope that, I don't really think that showcase some typical Object 430 version 2 gameplay. Just because I think usually you should be playing this tank from the second line of assault. Basically supporting your allies from medium range. 
Uh, I didn't really do that in this game. I was very, very aggressive, and with a lot of luck, it paid out. I got. I fear I can't show you the after game stats because I forgot to screenshot them, and on the test server, you just can't upload the replay files to whatreplays.com. So I can't show you. However, um, I think I got about. 4,000, 3,000 or 4,000 spotting damage in that game, uh, which is quite massive. We obviously also detected lots of enemies, so basically I was functioning as a scout in this game, which is not really the role of this tank because of the bad power to weight ratio and stuff. Uh, one thing that I forgot to point out is maybe you remember when I was traversing that slope up to the artillery, where the artilleries were camping, uh, basically you could see how much my tank slowed down due to the bad power to weight ratio and that's I think one of the major issues of this vehicle um, compared to the T-54. So but anyway I'm kind of getting into the summary already and for that I want to go back to the garage so I'll see you in a second. So all in all I must say I like the Object 430 version 2. I've had a lot of good games in it so far. Uh, I personally still prefer the T-54 as I said just because it's basically a better tank in every respect except for the turret armor and you could argue the gun but you could also argue that the T-54 has got the better gun so uh, it's it's basically a fair trade-off and I won't really go down this tank line here just because for unlocking the tier 9 vehicle for object 430 version 2 you only get the object 430 which i personally don't really like all that much or just doesn't suit my style of gameplay somehow as well as the other two russian medium tanks and for t54 i just like that tank more than the object 432 2 have got the t34 at the moment i will be going down this tank right here then unlocking the t54 and uh, after that, getting the Object 140 probably, or maybe the T62A, I'm not quite sure. But I'm not getting the Object 430 probably, just because I don't think that this tank is a fair match for other Tier 9 tanks in the game. Just because it's got it's got a lot of drawbacks and not really any advantages over other Tier 9 vehicles. So, yeah, I... If this tank had amazing accuracy, just to stay back and snipe like a tank destroyer, basically, uh, that, I think, would make this tank really interesting. But the way it is now, I just... I don't really like this vehicle all that much. So, anyway, I hope I could give you a good heads up on this vehicle. Please let me know in the comments what you think about it. Do you think it's... Um, balanced or do you think it should be buffed like I do and what do you think and um, how do you think it compares to the T-54 maybe we could have a little discussion about that in the comments I would appreciate that a lot and you could also sub or give a thumbs up to this video and uh, as usual thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you out there on the battlefield bye bye